Hi friends! In this video, I will show you how to use Flyway with Spring Boot and Maven for database migrations. Watch the whole video or click on the timeline to jump to the section you need. I'm going to use a project called New Year Watch for my demo. I'm not going to explain the whole structure of the project to save time. You can browse it in the GitHub repo. The link is posted in the description. Basically, it's a crude application like pet clinic, but instead of owners, we have civilians, and instead of pets, we have implants that these civilians implant into themselves. Cyberpunk themed, of course. All right, to get started with the Flyway and Spring Boot, we need several dependencies. Spring Boot starter data JPA, Docker Compose, because uh, I'm going to run Postgres SQL instance uh, in a Docker container, but of course you can run it locally. We also need the dependency on Postgres SQL and of course on Flyway. So there is the Flyway core and uh, Flyway for Postgres SQL. Let's look briefly at the Compose YAML file. It's uh, pretty simple. We are just spinning up the Postgres uh, container called NeuroWatch DB. We are specifying the user password and DB ports, a volume to store our data, and the network. And now the application properties. So here we also specify URL, username, password, and the driver for PostgreSQL. We also disable Hibernate because Flyway is going to manage our schema. So Hibernate DL auto none. And optional, you can show SQL with a Spring JPA show SQL true. Last but not least, let's enable Flyway. Spring Flyway enabled true and Spring Flyway Locations class pass DB migration. This is the directory where we are going to store our database migration files. Flyway supports four types of migrations versioned, repeatable, baseline, and undo. Let's look at all of them. Let's start with versioned migrations. They are applied on the ones in strict version order, kind of like git commits. There's a naming convention. The name starts with B, then it's followed by the unique version, two underscores, and the description. When you run database migrations with Flyway for the first time, Flyway creates a separate table in your database called the Flyway Schema History. This uh, table tracks uh, which versioned migrations have already been applied based on their checksum. So, the most important rule – never change migration files. If you need to introduce some changes, just write a new file. Alright, let's start with uh, creating our first migration. Let's call it v1, create tables. Flyway works with SQL, so you can write migrations in a familiar SQL dialect uh, for your database. In this case, we are using Postgres, so we are writing migrations uh, for Postgres. Everything is totally familiar, right? Create table, add constraint, and so on. Now, run your application. In the console, you will see a log. Let's look at it. So here we see that the Flyway schema history doesn't exist yet. Flyway validated one migration. It created the Flyway schema history table, migrated uh, schema to version 1, create tables and successfully applied one migration. Now, if we uh, look at uh, the structure of our database, we will see that the database uh, was successfully created and populated with necessary tables. Civilian, cyberware, implant session, and as you can see, flyaway schema history. Let's look at uh, this uh, table more closely. So here we see the version, the description, the name of the script, uh, and uh, the checksum. Let's create another version migration file. Let's call it v2 seed sample data and populate it with the test data. Run the application again. You will see that uh, Flyway migrated our schema to version 2 seed sample data. It applied one migration, and now the database is at version 2. And if you look below, we will see that uh, the data was indeed inserted, because now we get the information about the civilians in the console. Next up, repeatable migrations. Repeatable migrations are reapplied every time their checksum changes. The naming convention is the following, without a version, double underscore, and description. 
when the migrations are run, repeatable migrations uh, are always applied last. Usually, repeatable migrations are used to create uh, or update views, uh, procedures, or to perform bulk reloads of uh, reference data. Let's look at the example. We will create a repeatable migration uh, which uh, recreates uh, a view joining all three tables every time we run migrations. How do we achieve that? Well, it is actually quite simple. You use uh, the placeholder with a timestamp, and uh, so the migration runs uh, every time because the timestamp placeholder changes the checksum. As a result, Flyway will recreate this uh, view and update the statistics on every migration run. So here it is, our migration file, r double underscore implant summary view. In the beginning, you can see the placeholder Flyway timestamps. We will talk a little bit more about placeholders later on. And uh, there's also the comment that it is a repeatable migration. Here again, you use familiar SQL to join all three tables. Run your application again and uh, refresh the schema of your database. You will see that we have a new view called B implant summary with the columns from all the tables. Now let's talk about baseline migrations. Baseline migration is a single migration that represents the state uh, of your database after all of the version migrations have been applied. The naming convention is the following. B, db version, double underscore, and the description. For instance, uh, file B5, my database, represents uh, the state of the database after applying all version migrations up to and including version 5. If you use Flyaway on a new database, it uh, picks up uh, the latest baseline file, marks uh, every version migration which is lower than this baseline as ignored, and starts uh, from uh, the baseline, from this snapshot of the database. However, if uh, the database already has a Flyaway history, baseline files are skipped. Baseline files do not uh, conflict with the future V migrations, and they just uh, speed up the installation of uh, the database. So, for instance, uh, let's add uh, one more version migration, v4, add extra columns. Let's add a couple of uh, columns to the civilian and cyberware tables. And after that, let's uh, write baseline migration file, b5, double underscore, baseline after schema updates. So here we create a snapshot of a database after the fourth version migration. You can see here that we again create all the tables, but this time with uh, all the updates that we have introduced. As a result, if you run Flyway with a new database, it will start at version 5 and uh, it uh, will skip version migrations 1, 2 and so on. But uh, you can, uh, after that, uh, create version migrations again and uh, change uh, database schema just as we used to do. So, baseline is a baseline. Now, briefly about the undo migrations. Undo migrations uh, are supported in uh, Flyaway teams only. So this is the commercial offering of Flyaway. An undo migration undoes the effects of the version migration with the same version. So the naming convention is uh, u, the number of the version migration that uh, it corresponds to, two underscores and the description. Undo migrations work under the presumption that the whole migration succeeded and should be undone. But in some cases, migration can fail at uh, some points. So for instance, you have uh, five statements and uh, the statement uh, two has failed. But you don't know that. Undo migrations are not really helpful in such situations. Also, one undo file rolls back just uh, the last version, this uh, case v2, and uh, if you need to undo more uh, version migrations, you add more undo files. The alternative for community edition of Flyway, and maybe even better alternative for to undos, is a forward fix migration. So you write a new version uh, migration, describe it and then remove all uh, necessary schema changes or data there. If you are familiar with Liquobase, you know it has preconditions, uh, statements uh, that uh, must be fulfilled before the migration is run. 
Flyaway doesn't have uh, the liquid base style preconditions, but there are several alternatives. You can write conditional statements, for instance, create index if uh, not exists. You can use PostgreSQL DO, which executes anonymous uh, code block. For instance, uh, let's uh, add new version migration for creating an index only when both a table and column exist. Let's call it B5 for index birth rate if table exists. And here is the DO Postgres file. As you can see, we have the precondition if uh, exists, and then we apply the migration. You can also use uh, placeholders. We have already seen a placeholder in a repeatable migration file with a timestamp, but placeholders can also be used uh, to create preconditions. We can declare the placeholders in the application properties file. For instance, Spring Flyway placeholders and then the name of your placeholder. In this case, seed demo data. And then you set it to true or false. Then after that, you reference this placeholder inside the migration file. Let's see, let's create a new migration v6 conditional demo seat and here again we have the postgres to file but instead of uh, writing the lengthy precondition ourselves we simply use the placeholder with the if so if seed demo data is true then we insert uh, the demo data here flyway will substitute uh, the seed demo data with true or false at runtime as a result in non-production environment you can get demo rows, but in production, you can set this placeholder to false and uh, the block evaluates the if statement. And if the placeholder points to false, then it immediately exits and leaves the database untouched. Now let's see how we can use Flyway from the command line interface. Let's add the Flyway Maven plugin to our pom.xml. We need to configure it a bit. Basically, you need to specify the user, the password, the URL, and the schema, but uh, the schema is not obligatory. So the necessary is uh, user, password, and URL. After that, you can run the Flyway commands. Flyway supports five basic commands to manage database migrations. Info prints information about the current database version, pending migrations, run migrations, and so on. Migrate migrates a database schema to the current version. Baseline baselines the current database schema. It is useful when you need to start using Flyway with the existing database. Validate validates the current database schema. Prepare prepares metadata table. Clean drops all objects in a configured schema. Never, never use it in production. For instance, let's run Maven Liquibase info. Here we can see the summary of uh, the statistics for our database migrations. We can see the uh, info about the version migrations that uh, were applied. We used uh, the baseline migration, so all the migrations uh, below baseline are ignored. This command is very useful to know what's going on with your database migrations. And finally, let's see how we can use Flyaway in CI to run database migrations. We are going to use GitHub Actions for that. Before we write our GitHub Action workflow, let's uh, adjust uh, the plugin settings a little bit. So here we removed uh, the schema and uh, we specified the placeholders that we have, the seed demo data. We set it to true in this case because it's a demo. And another one is build uh, timestamp. This is going to be our custom placeholder. I'll explain why in a second. So what it is, what is the build timestamp? We need to uh, change the timestamp placeholder in the repeatable migration so that uh, the migration in CI doesn't fail. So add uh, this uh, new placeholder to the application properties and after that change the timestamp to custom placeholder in a repeatable migration file. Okay, and now we can move on to the workflow file. What do we have here? The file states that uh, we uh, run migrations uh, on push to the main branches. And here is our workflow file. Let's see what's going on here. So here we have uh, the name Flyway Migrations 
that's uh, the workflow's uh, name uh, that's going to be displayed in the actions tab. On workflow dispatch push uh, to branches main means that the workflow is automatically triggered every time the push to the main branch uh, is performed. The concurrency block. With this block, we verify that GitHub will not start uh, two runs of this workflow on the same branch at once. So if this happens, then the older job runs and uh, the new jobs uh, queue. Okay, and then we have the jobs block. Here we define only one job, it's called migrate. We spin up uh, the Ubuntu VM, start uh, a Postgres service uh, next to the VM, and specify the environmental variables for Postgres, DB, user, and password. Then we verify that uh, the container is up and running and it is healthy, and uh, after that uh, we proceed with the workflow. Then we specify some environmental variables for Flyway. URL, user, and password. Then uh, we specify the placeholder that we have, uh, build timestamp, it's our custom placeholder. In this case, uh, it stays uh, constant for this run, but it will change uh, the next one. Then we just check out the repository process resources, set up the JDK, I'm using Liberica JDK recommended by Spring, configure Java Home and uh, enable uh, Maven dependency caching. Then we run flyaways, uh, migrate and uh, validate commands. Migrate uh, creates uh, the schema history table and applies all pending V and R scripts. The validate uh, command checks that uh, the checksums in the database uh, match uh, all the applied files. And finally, we deploy the application. In this case, this is just a placeholder for demonstration. But anyway, the deployment step runs after all the steps in the workflow were successfully completed. In this video, we looked into integrating Flyway with Spring Boot and Maven. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and until next time!